Welcome back everyone to the State of the Nation. So, what is the Ministry of Foreign Affairs doing with regard to these fake allegations by Channel 4? Are we even stating our displeasure? Here's the State Minister of Foreign Affairs, Tarak Balthuri. The government takes these accusations very seriously and the government will be having an inquiry pertaining to these allegations. Uh, but we also know the history of uh, the uh, Channel 4 and we feel that they have a, a Sri Lankan bias. The uh, Assad Maulana, uh, whether this source is a credible source is, uh, is another question that uh, we need to uh, answer. Well, the, uh, the documentary doesn't specifically state what date uh, the, uh, 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 Mr. Sali uh, met with the, uh, the Islamic group. Uh, but what we can confirm is from February 2016 to uh, October 2018, uh, uh, Suresh Sali was serving in Malaysia. Uh, but we don't know during, during that period uh, whether he came back and went uh, f forward, when, whether he came on holidays to, uh, from uh, Malaysia or not. That's something which I think we'll have to get, uh, find out from the Ministry of uh, Defence. That was uh, the State Minister of Foreign Affairs, uh, Tarak Bal Surya. Well, Minister of Justice, Dr. Vijaydas Rajbaksa, back uh, in, I believe, around in 2017 or 2018, alerted the Sri Lankan parliament that ISIS was in fact recruiting. That entire speech fell on deaf ears of the Yaha Palaniya. And a couple of years later, 275 innocent lives paid the price. Joining me now is the Justice Minister himself. Minister, thank you very much for taking the time. I know you're really busy and I really appreciate you speaking to me. Now, did you know back uh, when you made that speech in Parliament that Gotabe Rajpaksa was the head of ISIS? who had the capacity to move nine suicide bombers to win his presidency, as claimed by Channel 4. Your reaction, sir? When I made a statement in the parliament on 18th November 2016, that was 29 months prior to the Easter Sunday attack. I was not aware about the Easter Sunday attack, but I knew that the country's security situation was at a very grave risk, especially when the Inspector General of Police was appointed and also after the appointment of the Defence Secretary, I gave sufficient warning to all those who are responsible of the security of the country that country security situation is at a stake. But none of them took any remedial measure. Uh, 29th months after my statement only that happened, I made the statement in the Parliament. And there was a, a serious campaign uh, within the government itself and also uh, within the fundamentalist group. Whereas that they were trying to brand me as a person that who was trying to, you know, whip up the, uh, uh, that is the racial politics. And I was trying to make the country a bloodbath. And there was merciless attack against me by many factors of the society, including some of the Muslim MPs in the parliament. But after 29 months uh, from the date of that statement, they realized uh, the truth of my statement and the gravity of the statement I made, whereas they took very lightly. Uh, now, of course, uh, the, we have lost over 269 lives, over 502 people were injured, all our brothers and sisters, Sri Lankans. Now, the people are waiting for justice. There had been many steps taken uh, by the law enforcement authorities during the present government as well as the previous government. But still that the people have some doubt about as to who were instrumental in making that operation. Therefore, that we have a duty, uh, whether it comes from this corner or that corner, it makes no difference. If there is any material uh, for us to investigate it, even with the slightest material, that we will do it. And we also want to find out what the truth is. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Minister of Justice, Dr. Vijitasa Rajbaksha. Uh, I really appreciate it. I also asked the opposition about their views on the matter, and this is what they had to say. Watch. In this Easter bombing, we need an investigation. The issue is that people wouldn't trust 
uh, just a domestic investigation anymore because the people who are complicit in one way or the other until their innocence is proven are people who are in power and who are presently wielding power even under the present president. That's why you will need an international component in the investigations. You will need the expertise in the investigation. And then the second one is really prosecution. The rule of law needs to be seen. And Sri Lanka has really lacked there for a long time. So with its AG's department, the private bar, the judges of this country, we all have a responsibility to establish the truth. Because unless we establish the truth, we can't safeguard even our legal profession. Uh, Mr. Pillayan Asad Maulana, has provided everybody the missing pieces of the jigsaw puzzle uh, to find out who were the real master brains behind the Easter Sunday attacks. So when we analyze uh, the response by various uh, government officials, two ministers yesterday in parliament, one called for an international inquiry with the uh, support of the opposition. The other uh, said that uh, any uh, exposures to destabilize the government institutions will not be permitted. So we can see the, uh, the reluctance and uh, the restrained uh, approach to this uh, whole exposure that has now uh, put the cat among the pigeons. Also joining me now is former Human Rights Commissioner of Sri Lanka, Dr. Pratibha Mahanameheva. Thank you very much uh, for taking the time to uh, join me. Your reactions to this so-called earth-shattering video by a dishonest media institution? Uh, Mahesh, thank you very much for giving this opportunity. Actually, this is a video they have released timely near the Human Rights Council session, which is going to start September. Actually, this is a baseless, false information, misleading information, incorrect information. Then who are behind this? Actually, they tried a similar video, Killing Fields, and that was a fake video. In UNHRC sessions, the Sri Lanka team has nicely proved this is a baseless and unproved video. This is the second episode of the drama. And what they try to do, disclose. Even that army intelligence officer was not in Sri Lanka at a time. Or oh, even they could have easily released when the uh, Easter Sunday commission was there. So the basic one is to win some votes. And Western countries these days are supporting for the reconciliation, rehabilitation, and the language policy in Sri Lanka. With all these things, Sri Lanka is now united most of the time north and south. So LTT support in diaspora and the transnational LTT government in Denmark, they need something to stay with their views and vision. So they tried in Canada Bill 101, that also now disproving. And this is the second attempt where you can see no direct evidence, circumstantial evidence, nothing. A whistleblower. A whistleblower can do anything. But we should, at, at least we don't need any type of commission to investigate this because they have already withdrawn that video from the scene. So whatever their efforts now fail, they will come up with another video. Why they take channel for only? There are other media, CNN, BBC, those channels are there, but they can't go behind that channel because a fake video, they will authenticity and put it. The only channel is where they try to a bankrupt channel. They try to get some viewer points and the other, other side, they want to discredit what they have done in the past. And also the real pick is the LLRC Commission, Lesson Learned and Reconciliation Commission. If you really see, you will understand what is channel for. So the government having a responsibility. So this is their unconditional, unconditional, you have to disprove that. Absolutely. Uh, Dr. Pratibha Mahana Meheva, former Human Rights Commissioner of Sri Lanka. Thank you very much.
as you very clearly know, the former president responded to this drama. In a media statement, the former president called this an anti-Rajapaksa rant with no merit. In his media release, the former president emphasized that he had no contact with Major General Suresh Saleh until he was elected president in 2019, after leaving his position as Defense Secretary in 2015. A short break now. When we return, we will discuss rising oil prices and their possible impact on our economy. This is the State of the Nation. Back in a moment.